What's happening, Who Dat Nation? The Chat Sports Challenge is back. So a couple months ago, we had one person comment 35 times sit on a video. It was crazy. So if you want to be the person to set the new record, rapid fire type saints to break that record, and whoever gets the most on it, whoever sets the record next, you're going to get a special shout out in tomorrow's video. And I got a very special shout out coming up really soon after this intro video, so stay tuned to see that. Happy Monday, Houdat Nation. Got the fresh cut and the fresh jersey. Shout out to I guy, Wild114 and John Borelli. A couple weeks ago, whenever the Saints actually uh, signed Derek Carr, we went live here on the channel, and they helped us raise over $2,500 to support the channel and support what we're doing here at Chat Sports. So special shout out to you guys because thanks to y'all, we are able to get a Derek Carr jersey. I told you it was coming. I tweeted out, got a special surprise coming on today's show. So huge shout out, huge thank you to Wild114 and John Borelli. They actually are Raiders fans. So I love that Raider Nation and Houdat Nation are coming together. It makes, the, it makes my life very fun. It makes my job that much easier and that much more worth doing. So I want to say thank you so much to y'all. Appreciate you guys. But let's get in to today's Saints news and rumors. Ian Rappaport, he tweeted this out today. He said, Tennessee quarterback Hendon Hooker is flying today for a visit with the Saints tomorrow. Sources said, coming off a clean ACL tear, Hooker's prospect for the 2023 season are positive New Orleans picks at number 29. So let's take a quick look at the depth chart and why you might say, well, why would we draft Hendon Hooker? We have Jameis Winston. We're bringing him back on a, for this year to be the backup. Like, what, what, what are we doing here? Well, QB3 is Jake Lutt, and, and last time he played, he had, I believe, like six interceptions and two touchdowns in 2020. Like, it just wasn't good. My point being, uh, you want to go younger, you want to – I mean, not – you want to go somebody that's fresh, Jake Lutton, you know you aren't going to get uh, quality NFL starts out of. Jameis Winston, he's on a one-year contract to be the backup, so maybe – Hendon Hooker could fill in for Jameis after this year. Or, or, or worst comes to worst, Derek, Ken, or Derek Carr and Jameis Winston get hurt. Knock on wood. I hope you guys heard that because I definitely just did it. And then Hendon Hooker uh, could be QB3. But taking a look at the stats that he was able to put up at Tennessee for the Volunteers. I've shown this graphic a handful of times, and every time I look at it, I'm still just so blown away about how these numbers are true. 69.6 completion percentage, 3,100 yards in the air, 27 touchdowns to two interceptions. That right there is probably my favorite stat. But an underrated and something that I love about Hendon Hooker is his dual threat ability. So 104 carries, 430 yards, and five touchdowns on the ground. A total of 32 touchdowns for Hendon Hooker for the Volunteers last year. And that's also after he tore, he missed it, he missed some time because of the ACL tear. So like just again, that much more impressive. But underrated thing about Hendon Hooker, he has a really good deep ball. He can stretch the field pretty well. And that being said, the numbers might be underwhelming, but I I I I like it. I really do. And we're going to take a look at the heat map of where he dumps a lot of his passes here. Uh, so red means he's throwing it a lot over there. So he's hitting the outsides. He's throwing it to the outsides. He's hitting, you know, screens, couple yards out, outs and whatnot. And then um, and over the middle, it's blue because there's not really much happening over there. But if we could go back to the deep ball stats, Seatman, this kind of just lays out the picture of you're going to get a lot of stuff on the sides, but the deep ball, he certainly does have it. 44.1 uh, 44 conversion rate on a deep ball, 1,200 yards in the air, 13 touchdowns, one interception. You know, say some of it might be his wide receivers. Say some of it might be Hendon Hooker, his ability to throw the deep ball. I'm going to say it's a little bit of both. I think it's pretty impressive what he can do. I wouldn't hate Hendon Hooker coming in and being a – Depth piece for the Saints defense or uh, Saints offense in that depth chart. I just don't know if I want to take him at 29 overall. I think that's there's a there's just a lot better ways to use the number 29 overall pick. But that being said, if you do want Hendon Hooker, his draft stock is only rising, and I I only project it to keep going and going and going and getting higher. I don't think he's gonna fall 
Uh, or not, I don't think his draft stock's going down. I think it's only going up at this point. So I want you guys to let me know. What say you? If you want Hendon Hooker in New Orleans, type HH. If not, just say, I don't want him. I don't like him. Dra or, or let me know who you would draft at number 29 overall. But let me know who that nation. Share your thoughts. If you get hit you with, hit with a YouTube ad break, please feel free to take an advantage of it. Scroll on down, spam HH, scroll back up, and by the time that you're up here, we'll be playing again. All right, so let's talk about Osiris Torrance. A, a, a draft target and a draft prospect I'm a big fan of. I really like what he was able to do for the Gators. He put up some really good numbers. He put up some good PFF grades, which we'll look at in a second. But should the Saints take him if he's available at number 29 overall? Now, a lot of mock drafts have been saying defensive line. Michael Mayer, uh, out of the tight end out of Notre Dame. You know, go get a Kalijah Canty, a Brian Breesy, one of those guys. But I think Osiris Torrance is a player that the Saints should definitely take a look at and definitely get an extra uh, extra set of eyes on. You know, do your homework on this cat because he's a dog. I, you know, that was bad. I'm sorry. All right, grade overall for his PFF. He had an 88 uh, overall PFF grade. Run blocks, uh, 89.9. I mean, that's impressive. 76.1 for his pass block grade. Sorry for the typo there. That's my fault, guys. And then he had zero sacks allowed as well, which I thought was really interesting to know. He's out of Greensburg, or he's out of Greensburg, Louisiana. It's going to be a hometown kid if he was able to come back. It would be pretty cool to see that story happen. And, you know, I'm a big fan of bringing back some Louisiana people to the Louisiana football team. So let's take a look at Osiris Torrance. He did have this to say about why he believes that he could be a good player. Because I'm the most dominant interior offensive lineman in the draft. And I feel like any team that gets me will one or will uh, get a day one starter and someone who is ready to play. Somebody who is going to take it like a pro and give it all you got. And that's why I, that's one thing I really like about Osiris Torrance. He's going to give you the everything he can. He's not going to give up on a play. He's, he's a big guy, too. We have combined results and measurables that we're going to talk about in just a second. But an underrated thing about Osiris Torrance is that I think he could fit in very well on this Saints offensive line. He's young. He's talented. He's aggressive. He's massive. I mean, this kid is huge. He's six foot five, 330 pounds, arm length. 33 and 7 eighths, hand size, 11 and 1 fourth. I mean, he's massive. He's huge. He's so big. And then for a guy that's that size to move like this, I'm not saying that 5 3 1 is impressive for somebody or for an offensive lineman. But when you're 330 pounds, you're, that's moving. I'm sorry, but that's freaking moving. 40-yard dash, 5.31. 10-yard split, 1.84. The 20-yard shuffle, 4.81. He had 23 bench press reps. I like it. The combine results and measurables are pretty impressive. And here is why I think he could fit on this offensive line. It's empty. It's pretty low. I mean, it is what it is. Cesar Ruiz is not pictured on or is not mentioned on this graphic, so I apologize about that. But I think that he's that. You could have Osiris Torrance fill in phenomenally, especially for a guy like if Andrews Pete gets hurt. I think that that's something that you should keep an eye out. Cesar Ruiz, he's going to be, he, he showed a lot of good things. I think that he could definitely be a good piece behind Cesar Ruiz and Calvin Throckmorton. Again, I'm so sorry that Cesar Ruiz is not on this graphic. That's on me. I'll get it better next time. Ryan Ramchak, he's solid. James Hurst, solid. Eric McCoy, great. That's my point being, though. We could always use a little bit more depth, especially when players are getting hurt. You brought in Storm Norton as a tackle. You also have uh, Coda Martin as a, as a guard. And then on top of that, you have Yasir Durant. You have Lewis Kidd. I mean, I just think that you could bring in a guy like Osiris Torrance, and he would do nothing but push the rest of the guys on this depth chart in order to make it that much better. So guys, be the GM for me. Would you draft Osiris Torrance at number 29 overall if he is available? Bear in mind, it might not be. I don't know. Things happen. The Saints do have a history of trading up, though, so if they really like him, maybe they do that to go get him. But let me know who that nation, if he is available at number 29 overall, would you go draft him? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. And if Osiris Torrance gets drafted or whoever the hell gets drafted by the New Orleans Saints, 
they're going to be rocking one of these fresh lids. I'm a big fan of the, the curved rim one. I love this hat. I'm a huge fan of it. Abby Alonzo, y'all know her. She's a big fan of the curved bell hats as well. So if you want to impress her, you should go get one of these curved bell hats. And then on top of that, if you just want to look like the freshest guy on Bourbon Street, go get one of these flat bills. Chatsports.com slash Saints hat. You can get geared up. Abby's in the studio laughing at me. Sorry, y'all, but it was just too good. I had to do it. Chatsports.com slash Saints hat. You can ha get it online, anywhere. It's all from Fanatics, all legit, all 100% real. We'll have the link for you in the comment section and the description of today's video. All right, so to round things out, are the Saints and Cinderella team? Because I saw this uh, article from Adam Sheen come out. It's always He always does this little thing around March Madness and whatnot. Uh, he says that he's picking a Cinderella team for the upcoming season. He picked your, your New Orleans Saints as his team this year to be the Cinderella team. So here's what he had to say. I, and I'm going to show a handful of quotes. He just kind of, as I'm giving my analysis on his explanations. The fact that Carr, he, he's really big on the Saints bringing in Derek Carr. Shout out again, Wild 114 and John Borelli. The fact that Derek Carr, who signed in New Orleans after being released by the Raiders, remains a polarizing figure among NFL observers is baffling to me. Over his nine NFL seasons, he's proven himself to be a stud. He's a leader. He's clutch. And he's the king of the fourth quarter comeback with 28 of those in his career so far. No one in the NFL has had more since he has arrived in 2014. And the Saints, they went five and six in one score games in 2022. Probably the one that hurt the most was the one against Vikings in London. Shout out to producer Seatman. You ruined my day that day. Think of how much better their record might have been with Carr working his magic under center. And so the question for Derek Carr is, can he be elite? We're going to get, I want to give some thoughts on that here, but let's read this quote. I like this a lot about what he has to say about Derek Carr. I think Carr will have the season of his life. I feel especially confident considering Carr's supporting cast. He'll have a highly motivated Michael Thomas, a second-year stud in Chris Olave at his disposable. And on top of that, he is going to have Juwan Johnson. You're going to have your draft picks for this year. You sign Brian Edwards. There's familiarity there. You have Alvin Kamara. You have Jamal Williams. You have a quality offensive line. The real question is, or the question is not, is this team good? It's can Derek Carr be elite with the team that he has right now? The Saints have put a lot of pieces around Derek Carr for there to really be no reason for him to not succeed. Again, a thing that I like to go back to a lot, and I do it maybe a little too much, but a thing that I go back to a lot is he has never had a good defense. He, this is the best situation that Derek Carr has ever been in. Sure, he's had quality players like Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller, Brian Edwards when he was around. I mean, he he popped off in one year. Call it how it is. He had a good year with Derek Carr. You also had Devontae Adams. I mean, there was. it's not like Derek Carr never had pieces that could do anything. This is just the best situation he's ever been in in his NFL career. So the question is, can he be elite with this team? And Shine on Carr also added this to me. This is, this is interesting. To me, Carr consistently ranks between the, between the top eight and 16 quarterbacks in the NFL, which means he's a legit franchise quarterback. And a lot of people like to say, he's not, he's not it. He's not a franchise guy. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw these up. I'm going to throw up a couple fours because I want all of you in the comment section to go type four if you believe in Derek Carr. If you believe that Derek Carr can get the Saints back to the playoffs, go down there and type four. We're, I, want, I want our QB1 to see this video. I want him to see all the comments, all the love, all the support from the Houdat Nation. So go down there, type four, comment right now. But while you're doing that, let me tell you about some key factors that we have to discuss in what, and, and which could contribute to whether or not Derek Carr could be elite with the Saints. So key factors being how Derek Carr fits on a new team. Can he fill in for an offense that he's unfamiliar with? Can he have good uh, communication, good relationships with Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael? Can he have chemistry with his offensive line, with the running backs, with all of his weapons on the field? 
Michael Thomas's health is also something, a big factor in this. Obviously, we know Chris Olave is great. We know that Juwan Johnson, we know that Rashid Shahid, we know that all these players are talented. But Michael Thomas is your wide receiver one. He is on a prove-it deal. He has something to show. He need, he's highly motivated. He needs to get going, and he needs to stay healthy. And that's why I don't hate the fact that he's on a one-year prove-it deal with the Saints. He's on a new contract, if you didn't know that. But... I saw videos of Michael Thomas working out. This guy is jacked, y'all. He has been putting in some work. He looks huge. It's going to be cool to see what he can do. I'm hoping we can get 10 to 12 games from Michael Thomas of health. I, Man, per all season would be awesome. But, like, you know, you got you to gotta have to assume maybe one or two of those he might miss. But I would love Michael Thomas to come back and have a full season. His health is huge for Derek Carr's success. Alvin Kamara's suspension. This is worth noting because... If he's missing anywhere from four to six games, yeah, you have Jamal Williams. You brought him in. But outside of that, that's kind of where it gets shaky. You want to bring, you want to have quality uh, help for Derek Carr. Yes, Jamal Williams led the NFL in um, touchdowns last year for running backs. Alvin Kamara was on a down year. Let's call it how it was. He didn't play that great. But I don't know how much of that is – he's not – you can't say I can't blame it on him. I think there's a lot of blame to be put on – uh, the coaching staff. I don't think that they were calling plays correctly for him. They weren't throwing screens. They weren't making this thing happen for him. And another thing to talk about is can the defense still perform? Can they be a top 10 you know, unit that they've been the past handful of years? Can they uh, protect and help Derek Carr whenever he has a lead? Can they keep Derek Carr in a game if the other team is starting to get a little, you know, run away with the score? Can they force a turnover and give the ball to Derek Carr and say, I trust you, go win us this game, quarterback? And then the other thing is the NFL draft. Depending on who they draft, what positions, how they fare, it, how they fit in the team. Like, there's a million things that you have to consider. So until the NFL draft, that's still something you have to watch out for. But in terms of the 2023 opponents, so you have the Atlanta Falcons. These are your home, these are your home uh, uh, opponents, by the way. So you have the Falcons, the Panthers, the Bucks, Chicago Bears. Lions, Jacksonville Jaguars, Titans, and then you have the Giants back at the Dome. Hopefully you can beat them because um, last time they played at the Dome, you lost and looked like a bunch of idiots. That being said, your away schedule, this has, you know, obviously, you, you know, with the away schedule, you have, the, you have the, the Bucks, Falcons, and Panthers. I just didn't think it was necessary to put them on there twice. But you have the Packers, you have the Vikings, you have the Texans, the Colts, the Patriots, and the Rams. I've seen a lot of stuff about how the over-under is set for nine and a half wins for the New Orleans Saints this year. So if you think that the Saints will have more than nine and a half wins, I want you to like this video and comment who that. I want, a, I want 500 likes on this, on this video. I want 500 who that's. I want 500 Saints. I want 500 fours in the comment section. I want you guys to get loud, get rowdy. Treat this comment section like you're out on Bourbon Street on a Saturday night having a damn good time and let me know, guys, do you think that the Saints can win more than nine and a half games? I sure as hell think they do. I think they can win anywhere from 10 to 12. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment who that. Who that nation. Y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time.